Good morning. Um, good morning and welcome to the licensing subcommittee on the, <coughs> is it the 8th or is it the 7th? I can't remember. 7th. 7th, of, 7th of November. The days are blurring into one. Um, yes, I'm Councillor Jane Dunn and I'm chairing today's meeting. Okay. We're going to all introduce ourselves and then we're going to pass over to legal just to explain the process. This is semi-judicial, so it has to be followed through quite formally. However, I want you all to feel as relaxed as possible and you will have the opportunity to ask questions, to um, present, but there are certain ways that it has to be done in order for in, in case it goes to appeal or anything else. So I will be quite firm about that. But apart from that, I just want you to, you will definitely have a chance to have your say. Okay, so as I said, I'm Jane Dunn and I'm chairing. Good morning, Lewis Chin Chen, councillor, member of the subcommittee. Good morning, Anne Woolhouse, council. Okay. Good morning, I'm Jane Groff from Licensing and I'll be presenting the report this morning. Good morning, Samantha Bond, Legal Advisor to the Subcommittee. Uh, and my name's Jack, Rising Point, and I'm shadowing Sam for the Subcommittee. Have we got the microphones working for the... Um, no. Okay. If they're not working, we may need to just switch those on. But if you'd like to introduce yourselves, we don't want to be shouting, so I'd rather it be working for you, yeah. Gamzi Emin, applicant. Can you just repeat your name so I won't pronounce it? Gamzi Emin. Gamzi Emin. Okay, that's a very nice name. Okay, yes. Conch, can you please repeat? Um, Julia Downs, I'm not sure what role I am. I'm, I live behind your shop. <laughs> Yes, an objection. Downs, D-O-W-N-E-S. No bother. Okay, just one clarification. Is it okay if I use both your Christian names? Do you know? Yeah, it's okay. That's okay. I didn't want to be over familiar, but I just think it's sometimes easier. Okay. Is that okay with you, Julie? Yeah, it's fine. Okay. Um, we'll hand over to Sam. <laughs> Thank you. Can I just check you've got a copy of the papers? Uh, we've got some spares if you want to refer to some as we go through. Did you? I think they were probably emailed to you, but... Yeah, yeah, sorry. Okay, we've got a spare for you if you... Just in case we start referring to page numbers and stuff, have you got one? Yeah, lovely. I can't see with these desks, sorry. <laughs> So the procedure's somewhere right near the back on page 71. So the licensing officer, who's Jane Goff, this morning will introduce the report. If there are any questions concerning the report, so if there's anything missing or it's factually inaccurate, we'll go through those then and get that amended for the record. We've not got any responsible authorities here present today, so what we'll do is hand over to Julia first to detail your representations, just to expand on anything that was written that you submitted prior and anything else you want to ask today. Members and officers will have an opportunity for questions and with the leave of the chair, the applicants may ask you questions as well. We'll then head over to the applicant to detail the application, provide clarification on the applicant and to respond to any representations made. So all those listed in the report and any raised here verbally today. Again, members and officers will have an opportunity for questions and with the leave of the chair, Julia can ask you some questions as well. You'll be given the opportunity to sum up, just to leave us with any final thoughts, before we take the options from Jane Goff, which is detailed in the report already, and we'll then go into private session where members can consider the application, take legal advice, and come to a decision. Uh, the decision of which will be given in accordance with the requirements of the Licence and Act 2003 and regulations made thereunder. Any time during the hearing, members can ask for legal advice, which can be an open session as we are now, or private session where we'll pause the recording and probably nip out to have a discussion and come back in and feedback what that was about. Um, and as we've alluded to, it is a webcast hearing this morning. That's how we sort of do things in public in these post-COVID times. Um, so hopefully we won't have any major IT issues as that goes forward this morning. 
So hopefully that's straightforward and with that I'll hand back to the chair. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I don't, I haven't heard the fire alarm check today yet, so it may go off. So we'll just pause proceedings. We do have a bit of a test on the Monday, but it normally goes off quite early, but I haven't heard it. So have you heard it? No, okay. So we will pause because it's pretty noisy, okay? But if it is a real one, we're all gonna follow Jenny, okay? So that's, yeah. Follow my leader. Okay, I'll hand over to Jane number two. It's very unusual to have two Janes with the same spelling. <laughs> and she's going to outline the report for you. Thank you, Chair. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for coming. Uh, for the hearing to determine the application for the grant of a premises license for GG Miele Supermarket, 715 to 717 Abbeydale Road. The applicant was Mrs. Gamze Amin, if I said that correctly. Um, and was received by the licensing service on the 13th of September 2022 and you can find this at Appendix A of the report. Initially the application was submitted referring to alcohol sales for consumption on the premises, however this was a mistake and the application was amended and therefore is to apply for the supply of alcohol for off the premises in the form of like a shop type um, premises. Um, it has been noted within the report that there have been no comments or agreed conditions submitted by the responsible authorities in regards to the application. But the reason for the referral for today is that we've had um, five local residents submit individual objections as well as a petition with over 100 or so without, I can't remember the exact amount without counting, at last count um, against the application being um, granted. Everybody has been, has been um, invited to attend the hearing today and those invitations are Appendix C of the report. And if you don't mind, Chair, I'm going to scoot through lots of the wording because we don't need to read it. And I'll go to section uh, point number eight, which is appeals. The Licensing Act 2003, section 181 and schedule five makes provision for appeals to be made by the applicant and those making representations against decisions of the licensing authority to the magistrate's court. So the recommendations today, Chair, are that all members consider, carefully consider the representations made and take such steps that the subcommittee consider appropriate for the promotion of the licensing objectives. Thank you. Thank you. Um, members, um, is there anything to question on the report that's not accurate? Okay, legal. Okay. This is at the point where there's anything in the report, um, all of you, that you can actually query before we actually hear any further. So we're all happy that the report is accurate. That's great, lovely. Okay, I will hand over to Julia to present. Thank you. Oh, I haven't really prepared anything, so I'll just speak from my experience, if that's all right. Just speak from the heart and just say what you need to say, um, yeah. I'll just say we have to only consider licensing yeah. in here though, so, do you know, but obviously just, uh, yeah. Okay, um, so it was myself and a number of residents and my next door neighbour, Alex Horn, did the um, petition. Um, so there has been quite a lot of community sort of feeling about this particular development. Um, which isn't part of this, I understand. And I suppose for me, in terms of the alcohol, the, the main things are the opening hours suggested. So from, I think the shop will be open between seven and midnight and alcohol between um, eight and 11 at night. And I think that's really quite out of the character for the, the kind of businesses that are already operational in the area. So I think we have a couple of places that serve alcohol on site um, and I think that most places are shut by nine. Um, so that would be North Town as well as the, I can't remember the name of the pizza place across the street. Um, and so it's quite out of character. Um, there are known issues with overcrowding and parking in the area. Um, so a few of us are quite concerned about you know, not be able to find anywhere to park, but also the potential for accidents and for the kind of antisocial behavior. The, the way in which there has been some road changes recently to kind of address the congestion and overcrowding and parking issues. 
which does cause quite a lot of things. And I think the police have done a roadblock onto Little London Road, so it blocks off the road, which actually makes it even worse, <laughs> the congestion in our area. Um, so we're quite worried about kind of, you know, ex a kind of exacerbation of criminal and um, sort of more social disorder things that we've already been through as a community. Um, and I suppose there's also the, the issue that there are places to buy alcohol quite nearby, but like away from a highly densely packed residential area. Um, for me, I think it affects the privacy and well-being for, for us who live in the house, which is directly joined to the place in terms of like how are we going to enjoy our garden and our space when there's going to be quite a busy shop. In report itself, I mean, I'm here to kind of like try and make a make repair and make this work for everybody. Um, so think about what could be put in place to make sure that that would be reduced really uh, and mitigated in any kind of way if this goes ahead. Um, you know, there's there's quite a lot of there's also an alcohol treatment centre nearby. Um, you know, as somebody who you know, um, I'm a lecturer in criminology and social policy. So I have quite strong feelings around how we support people's healing and recovery in the community. Um, and really, I feel like it would be wise to maybe have it not so late running would be my kind of first kind of mitigation, if that's at all possible. Um, but we are quite concerned as a community um, that because we're such a, a dense residential area, I know it would, we're off behind Abbeydale Road and we're used to road noise, but I think also bringing this very close to to our properties is going to cause a bit of a, a lot of distress. Um, yeah, hopefully I've made sense. It's not very organised sort of layer of thoughts, but hopefully you can get a flavour of like a strong kind of community feeling in the area and just um, not really wanting this to go ahead as planned, um, but hopefully wanting to find some way in which we can make this work for everybody. Um, yeah, I think I'll stop there. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Julia. No, that was absolutely fine. Yeah, you will get chance to. Um, does anybody have any questions that they wish to ask Julia at this point? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Thanks, Julia. Um, just in relation to sort of public nuisance, so um, noise on the street, um, you know, sort of rowdy behaviour, that sort of thing. Are those existing issues at the moment that you're aware of on that stretch of Abbeydale Road? Uh, yes, yes, it is. It does happen, um, but it's more not so much on Abbeydale Road, but actually where they've shut off the roads on Little London Road, there are now people who congregate there quite a bit. So that does exist. And are they are they students or sort of um, you know other other age groups? Uh, yes, students and young people, I would say. But I can't. I don't want to judge. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. Thanks, Chair. I think we need to be clear that this is one of the trial proposed closures, isn't it, that's under, do you know, and the things that uh, Lewis has highlighted were things that the police will feed back if this is to continue. So it's very difficult with it being a trial, you know, at the moment, because it's not in stone and that's the whole point of a trial, do you know, completely. But I, um, it's interesting to hear that feedback because I'd heard it as well. So thank you for that. Want to come back on my comment? Yeah, I think because I walk that road like nearly every day going back and forth from Virgin Gym, there's definitely been a shift in how it feels um, in terms of safety. It's not very well lit and there are lots of people sort of hanging out around there now. Um, yeah, and my fear would be like if there's also a place where you can buy cheap booze late into the night, that could exacerbate that. But I understand it's a trial. I think that's a bit of a, 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 move, a, a shift away from the licensing because it's not actually on where the premises are. And that's caused by a road closure, not by the opening of a licensing. It's very, very difficult, but the evidence we have to judge has to be related directly to that. If there's other things happening in an area that we can amend, then we should be doing that as a local authority, bringing the community with us, obviously. But, how, yeah. Any questions? Um, anything you'd like to ask? Just how long have you sort of been experiencing these issues? I know you said there's been a bit of a shift since the roadblock was put in place, but has it sort of always been? Um, yeah, it's got worse since they've been developing. 
different flats around there. Um, it really has congested the area, overcrowded it, caused quite a bit of local tension between people driving up the wrong way of the road and all that. Um, so, um, but really since, um, you know, they're creating much more residential housing in that area without parking. And that's another issue, I think, with one of these kind of proposed developments as well, that there isn't parking. Um, but yeah, I understand the limits of this particular committee. So I think some of the recommendations mentioned that there's another Tesco not too far away as well. Do we have, what, have you encountered any sort of issues in terms of people visiting there and, and coming back from it or in your area? I don't quite understand what you mean. Sorry, just... I think a lot of the concern was about a lot of licensed premises of a similar nature being in such a close proximity. I was, I'll focus it better if there were any issues associated with Tesco that you've, you know, you've experienced. Uh, no issues with that because it's quite far away from residential areas yeah. and there's parking. Um, and the same with the other kind of place nearby near the post office further down the road. There's, there's a little bit of parking there. <laughs> But there are known issues in Abbeydale Road to do with businesses that still isn't really resolved. Have you got sort of like a residence group or just unofficially you all sort of get together and, and discuss things? Um, I'm a member of a cat group. <laughs> 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 These things come up there, but mainly it's been the neighbours. We've, we've, you know, seen that what's, what's coming and we, we tend to support each other to be like, or, you know, raising issues and concerns where we can. I just wondered if, if anything had been reported to the council. We, we've got sort of the environmental health service that can look at things from the public nuisance side of things um, and obviously the police for any crime and disorder. I wondered if there'd been any sort of engagement with them. Um, there definitely has been engagement with the police around the driving and the parking issues and the kind of accidents and incidents around there. Um, in terms of the flats and things and developments, it's mainly been through you know, neighbours like me um, <coughs> and others putting in objections. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if it's relevant, but so far we don't feel particularly heard or listened to. Um, so it would be good to have more engagement. Yeah. Well, sorry that that's been your experience so far. Hopefully we can work on that going forward. But yeah, that's it from me, Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Can we also Anne? Um... Uh, yes, I'd, you say that you're premises back onto the new ones but exactly how is it how are you impacted by it you know when you say your garden is it a, is there a wall or a fence how, how are you affected yeah there's a wall and it would be directly linked I, I don't know how the, the planning goes but it would be like directly onto it yeah so so the new premises are going to have a sort of a yard at the back of it that comes up to your the wall where your garden goes into the new premises from the plans I saw, there's no gap at the back or yard, but you can correct me if you like. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. Yeah, <laughs> we're probably jumping into the next stage. It's very difficult. Yeah, go ahead. You can. Yeah, and um, as far as I'm aware, there is a little bit of space between us and the neighbours at the back. Is there anything you'd like to ask of Julia at this point on what she said, or would you rather address it in your presentation? I'd rather. Um, that is fine. It. Yeah, I do allow, do you know, just, you know, kind of, yeah, Thank that's you. lovely. Okay. Thank you, Julia. What we're going to do now is hear, okay, and then you will have an opportunity to ask questions alongside with that. Okay, do you want to go ahead? Thank you. Thank you. Um, we don't have any objections from the police or from the authorities. Um, I feel like if there was a chance of us um, causing crime, we probably wouldn't um, be able to... Um, we, we would get an objection from the police. We've not had that. Um, also, yes, we have applied for the licence until 11pm, but that doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to be trading until 11pm. We could... We could close at 9 o'clock, we could close at 10 o'clock. We've not decided on the hours yet. Um, and also, yes, um, there is another shop um, about three minutes away from us. Um, they sell alcohol as well. 
Um, Tesco's only 10 minutes walk to us. Um, they sell alcohol. Um, and in, in terms of the rehab centre, um, that's not very far from us. I feel like if someone did want to buy alcohol, they would go out of their way and walk 10 minutes. Um, and in, in terms of trying to reduce crime, um, we have got a quote from Wilkin Arms for Red Care. So if we feel that um, there are problems, we will be using Red Care. We've already got our quote, and, in, and it's very, very high chance that we will be using Red Care. It's no consumption on site, so therefore I feel like people are just going to be buying and walking off. Um, no parking space in front of the shop, so again, I feel like that would stop people from hanging around and making noises um, and causing crime. Um, sorry, I do apologise. Take your time. And also, I would like to add that um, it looks like it's just been focused on the sale of alcohol, but we will probably be selling 10% um, of alcohol, and they would be mainly with cases where people can just buy and go to their homes, not much of loose alcohol than cases. Um, and the rest will be grocery as well. So as I said, I just feel like it's, it's really focused on the alcohol side of it, but that's not what will be only selling alcohol, we will be selling groceries as well, and alcohol is going to be a very small percentage of our sales. Um, so far, I think that's it from me. Thank you. Questions from? Yeah, I'll let Han go first this time. Okay. Um, you mentioned that you, you've not decided on your opening hours yet, that you might be closing at 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock. Is that... Do you mean just for the sale of alcohol, or do you mean for your general sales? That's that's what you you. For the general sales, we could close the shop at nine o'clock as well. Yes, we have applied until eleven p.m. because at the moment we don't know what time exactly we want to open until. But as I said, there are um, chances that we could close earlier. Uh, in view of the petition and uh, you know the objections that have obviously been received from around, are you taking that into consideration with your opening hours? Yes, we will. Yeah. Thanks, Chair. Um, I noticed that for Monday through to Saturday, the um, opening hours are slightly longer than the hours you've applied for for the sale of alcohol. So the sale of alcohol is from 8 to 11, but the opening hours from 7 to midnight. Was there a reason for that? Um, as I said, only because we don't know, um, we've, we've not really decided on what time we're going to be trading until. So that was why the application was made like that. Okay, that's, that's fine. Um, and then just in relation to promotions and discounts, do you anticipate doing many of those in relation to the sale of alcohol? It, it depends on the cash and carry prices and, you know, what we, if we can put them on offers, yes, we will. Thank you. Thanks, Chair. Sam? Just in terms of your experience, you sort of referred to objections from the police and other authorities. Is, have you done something similar to this previously? Or? Um, do you mean if I've got an experience in the sector? Yeah. Yes, I have run my own supermarket for five years and We've never had a problem with the police, and we also do have a family business at the moment as well. Is that also in Sheffield? Yes, it yeah. is. Just getting that vibe from you that <laughs> it wasn't a new venture. Um, will you be DPS as well, or is there going to be someone else? I probably will be, yeah. And obviously, in terms of going forward, it is quite an active and a vocal community. Would there be sort of plans to work with them and have discussions, you know, if there were to be problems and somebody approached you to discuss that, is that something you'd be, you'd be open to? Yes, definitely. I mean, if, if, if there's crime and people hanging around and 
you know, causing noise and stuff, that's obviously going to affect my business as well. It's going to affect my building as well. And I wouldn't want anyone drinking and damaging my building. So, yes, that would definitely be something I would consider if there are problems. Thank you. I've got a couple of questions. You say you've uh, got experience in the sector. That's absolutely great. Are you going to be using a similar model to the ones that your family and how you've done before? Or is this going to be something that's going to be kind of adapted to fit into what the community gaps are? Because we know you've mentioned alcohol, but you've also mentioned groceries. So it's kind of what gaps is there in that market that the residents may like to be able to shop rather than go to Tesco and somewhere else, because you said you only expect alcohol to be 10%. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll let you answer that first. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the sale of alcohol is probably going to be about 10%, but mainly we are going to be focusing on groceries and fresh breads and things like that, because there are schools around. Um, and it, 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 basically, it's not just alcohol sales, and obviously, it is a new area, yes, I have, I do have experience, it was a different area, um, we will be sort of focusing on the needs of the, the new area. Okay, you've mentioned schools around, um, you know, kids going in to get, which we know they can go in the supermarket, there's alcohol there, and a lot of shops when they do want to have, you know, school children in, do limit the number of children in, you know, for, for reasons, but that can mean that children are congregating outside. Um, so it's kind of more to do with the business model that I'm quite curious about, because are you going after that market or are you going for more the bespoke breads as well as being able to get the alcohol? I don't really know. I can't figure out what your business model is at the moment. So basically it will be like fresh breads and sandwiches and stuff like that. So that would probably um, be more aimed at school children. So you'll be buying those in, not from a local baker. Do you expect to get those? I'm just trying to see how personal it will be compared to, you know, which is not a criticism. It's just to get in mind because we do not have an impact assessment in any of our areas around there. So it was kind of, if you're getting it from a major wholesaler, they can be the same everywhere. Whereas if you're buying from local bakers or people within the city, they can be more bespoke. I just was curious in your business model. Um, we will be buying from wholesalers, yes, but at one point we did consider... Um, having like a little bit in there where we could make it ourselves so it, it, it could be made freshly as well okay that might need different like kitchen things and whatever so I don't I'm not too sure on that but Sam could answer that could you answer that do you know or would it go through planning they've not applied for it so yeah. I'm just planning no. I'm considering as you've applied for and if that's something you want to do at a later date then we, we can address it then but yeah for now I'm off too fussed <laughs> no, it's okay, but if you did want to make, uh, there is other things that have to be done, so you wouldn't be able to make them in there without it going through the planning. I used to chair planning, so it's kind of, yeah, okay. Thank you. I just thought of another one, sorry. Um, just in terms of the application, I know you've said you're not sure on your opening times yet, but if your sale of alcohol times and your opening hours don't marry up how do you sort of propose to manage that so if you've got an hour at the end of the day between 11 and midnight how would you stop people purchasing alcohol um if we if we do trade until 12 o'clock and alcohol sales until 11 o'clock there will be special fridges um where we could like put the um shutters down on them Uh, staffing, obviously, um, if you're going to decide to close at 9, sometimes 11, when you've got staffing, they need to know the hours that they're working. So do you intend to be working in this yourself so that you can, doesn't really matter whether you close at 9 or 11? 
I will be working there myself. Uh, my husband will be working there with me as well. Um, and we will probably have a few more staff working with us too. Jay, just in regards to working with neighbours and obviously the, the petition that's been submitted, etc. cetera, um, would it be something you would consider making like a contact number available if there was any issues that they could contact you with or and, and like working with residents to, to get any sort of con like so they could contact you for any reason or or get in touch if there was any problems moving forward is that something you might consider yeah that's fine yeah have you contacted the local forums do you know around there it's a very very active area as i'm well aware so it's kind of i know the business community done a lot of work working with the residents and it's one of the ways that a lot of fears are alleviated. So, the, you know, like the Lantern Festival that went off at the weekend, absolutely amazing. So it is a way of doing that. So uh, I would suggest that you get the contact details off Julia or they can, you know, transfer those across. Julia, would you like to ask anything? Yeah, that would be great. Um, I suppose for me, it's just about how much you've taken into account the impact that you'll have on local businesses like AM News and Sharps, who do fruit and veg. I think they're like family business have been there for years. So you say you're going to be doing groceries. And that's, I think, quite worrying on that angle. I'm also really worried about um, the opening hours not being confirmed. Because we're wearing the planning application. You, you asked for 24 hours opening. And now it's shifted again. And I'm just a bit worried about that. So anything you can do to kind of confirm or pin that down for me would be super helpful. Um, and also, where are your staff going to park? Yes. Um, staff will probably use parking um, on the road that's sort of opposite us. Um, there are free parking there. Um, other than that, in terms of the opening hours, um, Yes, at the moment we've not decided, but we are trying to do our very best to obviously help with these concerns as well. We don't want people to be unhappy about our trading hours. We don't want people to think there's going to be crime there. And obviously, if there is a chance that we are going to be causing problems, obviously we are willing to close early. I don't know if... Um just as a general point of clarification, we often encounter this where we have a conflict between planning hours that have been authorised and licensing hours. And the general point is that we go with whichever is more restrictive. So if you've got a 24 hour planning application license that's approved, but you're only going to operate until 11 or midnight, then that's the one that, that you'll have to operate to. So whichever is the stricter, basically, out of the two. Um, so, I mean, I don't know what your, your planning application was. <laughs> because we're, we're completely separate, but that's how we operate in terms of things from our side of things anyway. So I just wanted to clarify that. I was about to say that, remembering my, my planning. No, it's okay. It is the most restrictive that takes precedence. It's very, very, very confusing, but uh, yeah. yeah. Has the planning application gone through then? Do you know what your planning application hours are? At the moment, I believe it's until 11 o'clock. That was the application, yeah. Is there any more questions at all? <laughs> okay. No? If you'd like to summarise of why you think, you know, finally, in light of everything that's been said. Okay. That's great. Um, as I said, I am willing to help out as much as I can um, by getting a quote from Walking Alarms with Red Care. Um, if we do have to close earlier than the application hours, then we are willing to do that as well. Obviously, the last thing we want is to cause concerns and problems. Um, other than that, I don't have much to say at the moment. Thank you. Okay, over to Jane to summarise the options for the committee. 
Thank you, Chair. Okay, so the options open to the committee this morning are to grant the premises license in the terms requested, to grant the premises license with additional conditions, or to reject the whole or part of the application. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, what will happen now is that you will go into another area while we will go into private session, seek legal advice, and then we will come back to you. Sam, if you must want to run through anything else, if I've not missed it. I'm taking over. <laughs> I'm turning into the legal expert. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Um, we've thought long and hard and uh, took a lot of advice. Um, we will be granting the license. However, the, it will be the alcohol license will be eight while 11. Okay, Monday to Sunday. The premises license will be seven while 11. I want to reassure the objector that um, this you know, we really have looked, but the majority of the objections have got absolutely nothing to do with licensing, so it can't be considered. And I will be feeding back as licensing chair the issues that are occurring in the area due to the trial. However, they again cannot be attributed to the licensing. I want to reassure you, which I do all the time, that if there are any breaks in licensing, if there is any antisocial behaviour, the licensing committee do have the power and do revoke licences. You know, so that is where the power for the licensing committee can do. What we can't do is surmise, and because we haven't had any objections from the police, the statutory authorities, they do all of that work. And I just want to reassure you, I mean, we, I really want to encourage small business. I really want to encourage you know small shops that people don't have to drive to get what they want but I do kind of really hope that you all work together you know on this and the people that will be using you nipping to the shops when they've forgotten something at the end of the day are the people that live around the corner from you and that is where the power is um, to make the business thrive but that is the decision of the committee. Sam? Sam? what happened there <laughs> just to, to tie it up as the chair said just because it's granted doesn't mean it, it is granted forever so if we do receive evidence that there are problems being caused we can have a look at it and there are a range of options available but we do wish you every success with it obviously because we've amended your application a little bit you have the right of appeal against that so as the chair said the alcohol license will run from 8 a.m until 11 p.m for seven days a week and the opening hours 7 a.m until 11 Monday to Saturday and then opening at 8am on the Sunday so like I said because we played around with it you have the right of appeal against that and you and the others that submitted objections also have the right of appeal because obviously we've granted the license so following the hearing everybody that's contacted us or receive a notice setting out how the decision was made what was considered that final decision and, and how to appeal it um, so I don't think I've actually said, but it's within 21 days to the Magistrates Court and they'll sit, as members have done today, and consider whether the decision that was made today was correct in light of the information available at that time. But if you need any further information, then licensing or, or legal are happy to, happy to help. But we wish you best of luck. I just want to clarify that the Sunday opening hours will be 8 while 11, not 7 while 11. Yeah. Just <laughs> Councillor Chin Chin very kindly just made sure, just in case that wasn't clear. Okay. Thank you everyone for your time.